Good morning. My name is Mary O'Brien and I'm a member of the Oblet Lourdes Pilgrimage Team. On day nine of our novena, it's a great privilege to welcome you here, actually to Lourdes, and we're standing above the Rosary Basilica this morning. So we begin our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We'll start with a prayer. Holy Mary, our mother, Today and each day we entrust ourselves entirely to your loving care. We place in your hands our hopes and happiness, our every anxiety and difficulty, our whole lives. May our every undertaking be directed and guided according to the will of your Son, by the aid of your prayer and special favour with God. Amen. So this morning, as we've been doing during these Novena days, we're just going to continue Mary's faith journey. And after her son's death and then his resurrection and ascension, we know from the Acts of the Apostles that the mother of Jesus was in the upper room with the Apostles, awaiting the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And from chapter 1 of Acts of the Apostles, verses 12 to 14, we read... Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So here we can see that Mary was part of the church from the beginning. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is with the apostles in the upper room. And I believe that she was probably supporting and encouraging them. They would have been anxious and afraid. And I've no doubt they were feeling lost and alone since the death of Jesus. Of all those present, Mary would have, would have understood that God had not abandoned them. Up until the death of Jesus, the disciples' experience of God was in the second person of the Holy Trinity. That is, in the form of Jesus, whom the disciples could see and touch, share a meal with and chat to. But now the disciples, the new shepherds of the Christ Church, they will experience the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. So now God will come to them in a different way. With the gift of the Holy Spirit within them, the disciples will go from this place as missionaries, proclaiming the good news about Jesus and their life with him. The Holy Spirit is God. It's the third person of the Blessed Trinity. And the Holy Spirit dwells within our hearts and operates from deep within us at all times. So although we never see the Spirit. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit within us that calls us to act in ways that draw us toward God. Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit from the time of the Annunciation and she has been a missionary disciple all her life. From that time of the Annunciation she has been continually and faithfully saying yes. Now we are called by the Holy Spirit within us since our baptism to follow the example of Mary, to say yes to God in our own lives. Pope Francis reminds us, all the baptised, whatever their position in the church, are called to be actively involved in proclaiming the good news of the gospel. I believe if we take time to pay attention to the inner promptings or nudges within us, we can recognise and open ourselves to the work and presence of the Holy Spirit within us and to do as Pope Francis asks to be witnesses to the gospel. I know there are times when I might impulsively want to lash out or be offhand with someone but I might sense an inner urge to be kind, to be constructive and not critical or to be forgiving and compassionate and I honestly believe that's the Holy Spirit at work within me. I probably don't often or many times respond as I should, but I always feel that nudge then within me afterwards and I know that I have not said yes. When we watch out for the needy, when we stand for gospel values and try to be inclusive, 
That's the spirit at work within us when we settle down to pray. For me, that's the Holy Spirit bringing us into the world of God and immersing us in the presence of God. And I believe that when we experience moments of a deep sense of joy without any real sense of why that is so, that's the spirit alive within us. God can give us no greater gift than the Holy Spirit, a way of being aware of God within us. We talk about it all the time. We say God is within us. And my prayer is that we will become more conscious of the spirit so that we can, like Mary, respond positively as the spirit urges us so that our lives will become and continue to be witnesses to the good news of the gospel. Now we gather all our prayers and intentions for ourselves, for each other, and for all those for whom we've been asked to pray. And we offer them to God as we say together our novena prayer. O Mary, you who appeared to Bernadette in the hollow of a rock, in the cold and dark of winter, you brought the warmth, the light, and the beauty of a presence, the friendship of a smile, the light of grace. In the hollow of our dark lives, in the hollow of this world where evil is strong, bring us hope and restore our confidence. You, who said to Bernadette, I am the Immaculate Conception, come to help us, sinners. Give us the courage of conversion, the humility of penance and the perseverance of prayer. We entrust to you, who are our Lady of Good Help, all whom we carry in our hearts, and especially the sick and all those who have lost hope. You who guided Bernadette to discover the spring, guide us to your Son, who is the source of eternal life, and who gave us the Holy Spirit, so that we can call God Father. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. Saint Bernadette, pray for us. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Thank you for joining me this morning here in Lourdes, in a very special place. May God bless us all and keep us all safe this day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.